so sad this internship is over. This is a J.R. Hendrick Texan gentleman given in a narrated format. Hello, everybody. Okay, now it's been a while since we podcasted. <laughs> And that live on the air. So we're going to July the 29th through 30th. Our drink of choice is JR Root Beer. JR, you could give the wrap up um, from last time. We took a limo down to Claude's trailer at Chesapeake to get some supplies. And then, by boat to Arlington, to meet with Congressman Bill Hume, briefly, to get some support to get it passed the Senate. That Thursday, offshore drilling passed the House. 97 Democrats them jump the minority to vote with Republicans for offshore drilling. Claude then called us to meet at the Laurel, Maryland home of Tennessee Senator Fred Thompson. <coughs> okay, picture this. They're called to the Union. And uh, intern to Paul into the planning room. And they're sitting down, chilling out and relaxing when Ace rushes uh, fruit. I'm really sorry, guys. But this is bad. This is really bad. I said, I said, pulling a paper. I should be up on my, on the hill right now, working with Claude, or getting things ready. I don't know. But here's the thing. They're getting a force of delegations in Florida, California, Colorado, Tennessee. It's real bad. The Senate vote. The Senate vote vote, vote, takes place in two hours. Go on down there and do what you've got to do. Keep the press away from him. I don't actually wonder what's going on with I keep the one that have to keep the press away from Claude. So it's three AM three three PM rather. Claude Claude was all Claude was all antsy when we arrived and entered the Senate gallery. The vote was unbelievable. Fifty eight senators Supporting offshore drilling. 41 against. <laughs> okay, so it's 5 p.m. The offshore drilling bill had 60 pages 
and was typed and qualified. Almost immediately, walked to the president. Well, Bill, this is Bill is good in substance, but I have some mysteries to solve, President Clinton said. Mr. President, what do you want to, 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 to see? Bill White, Deputy Secretary of Energy, said. This idiot wildcatter couldn't even get the two senators from Florida to agree. If you remember, I announced in late February 93 a moratorium on offshore drilling. So, because he couldn't get the two senators from Florida to even agree, I am forced to, to veto the bill. Cloud was devastated when President Clinton vetoed his offshore drilling bill. He vowed that he would Join Daddy in criticizing the Clinton administration for being so idiotic. Okay, so at 7 p.m., the family sits down to a dinner. It's baked. It, Baked dinner. Baked chicken dinner. <laughs> I've been on a bit of shake and bake. <sighs> Obviously absent was Claude because he found that President Clinton vetoed his offshore uh, drilling measure. It's 9 p.m. In the mansion front lounge, the family gets a call from Christine back in the back in Mibo. Mom, you wouldn't believe this. Jennifer and I have been invited to this opening swimming party with some new friends of ours at Midway Prep. Christine said. Well, just not sure. No, yet. But you ain't see a boy and tell me or your mama. Uh, can clear it, Jim said. Jim, please, Betsy said. Obviously, Claude didn't come. Dad, obviously, Claude didn't come to have dinner with you guys, Christine said. Told you he's a loser. Told you he's a dork. Don't blow up for this, Christine. Miss Fortune, Christine. Also, drilling is important to this family, too, JR said. All right. Ain't no. All right, that's enough. I get it. All he cares about is his ego and offshore drilling, Jim said. 
I don't care whether he comes back to Washington or not. But as long as he don't have uh, these damn ulterior motives. So it's 11 p.m. Jim and Betsy lay in bed together. And Betsy's like, well, it's, it's a shame. <laughs> He's going to find the back to Adam took tail between his legs. And, uh, Jim, Jim said, Janet, uh, is ruling his empire. All but cared about is, is all his again his empire is all he cares about. So I'll tell you what. I don't know how often I'll be coming back to Texas. I'm gonna build my uh, network. All friends up uh, friends up here in D.C. Jim said. Well, you reached out to Greg Sanders in Arlington. I don't think he wants much to do with Claude anymore. Yeah, I know. Um, in the, I'm in church a couple weeks ago. So... It wouldn't hurt to really talk to him. <coughs> Daddy would reach out to Greg Sanders the next day. And he would be instrumental in being there with Daddy. When Mama went back to Texas when I went back to Texas, especially the few times uh, except for the few times Claude showed his face around him in D.C. Okay, so it's 1.35 a.m. Come on, Elizabeth. Wakes up crying. Um, a cute homesick for the ranch. In two days, she and Betsy would be back in Texas. 3 a.m. Eastern. Waking up, Jim goes downstairs to the front lounge to listen to some music. 5 a.m. Eastern. Betsy joins her husband in the mansion front lounge, listening to some of the music. That they used to, when they first uh, fell in love back in 1968. It was obvious that that neither one wanted Betsy to return back to Texas just yet. But Jim realizes that returning to Texas is the best uh, interest of the entire family. Okay, so it's 6 a.m. Christine is up uh, Cleaning the stalls and feeding the cattle. <laughs> feeding the horses, rather. Okay, 10 a.m. Eastern. <clears throat> Jerusalem Baptist Church. 
JR is having Sunday school with Karen for the last time as she would be flying back to uh, Midland on August 5th. The topic, evangelism of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 p.m. Central. Uh, Christine is at the ranch that afternoon milking the cows. She is also working on uh, feeding the chickens. Two PM Central. Christine's at Jennifer's house with Jennifer, her parents, and Zachary, Jennifer's uh, brother. Well, your mom, well, your mom is returning back to Texas on Tuesday. That's good news. Brenda, Jennifer Smothers said. If you can call it good news. The fact is, Mom would not be coming home if Grandma wasn't dying, Christine said. Young lady, let me tell you something, Jennifer's father said. D.C. is a fishbowl, if not a cesspool, that changes, that changes everyone. I almost found out too late. Then yes, I'm not sure your father is ready to discover this yet. <clears throat> Look on the bright side, Christine. With your mom coming back, we can all get, go shopping together, Jennifer said. Just hold it in the morning. Mom does her clothes shopping. <clears throat> for herself. Either in Baton Rouge or New Orleans, Christine said. Okay, so it's 3.30 p.m. back in D.C. And the mansion front lounge was left of the family sits down to talk. Well, I have a little late Sunday walk in the park and talk and talking with Karen. We're doing pretty good now, Mama, Daddy, Jared said. Mama Jr. We have an important dinner tonight with Constantine Bush and his family. I want everyone to go. Oh, wait. Mama Jr. We have an important dinner tonight with Constantine Bush and his family. I want everyone to go. And Grandma Elizabeth, for what reason? And Jim's like, well, not everything tonight is going to be politics, uh, Grandma Elizabeth. I just want to go out and show some social races. And Grandma and Jared's like, okay, Daddy. 
I don't see why I can't be there. And to make Constantine Bush once again. And I let my, let my uh, grandma Elizabeth, she's like, Bushes. Well, bless her little pointed hat. And Betsy's like, just this one time, uh, Mama, please, for the sake of Daddy, Betsy says, and Elizabeth says, for the sake of Daddy, and that's it. Okay, so it's 5.30 p.m. Central. Big Mama at Jennifer's house. Christine is having a hamburger steak with the rest of the family. Now, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern, uh, the Hendrick Party um, of Jim and Betsy, Jr. and Grandma Elizabeth arrive at the reception area of White Castle and Great Falls. Um, and Hillary Bush is like, welcome, the family. Uh, there's some tea here in the reception room. And we're also going to have a nice uh, dinner tonight. That includes some, some chicken fried steak. So it's 6.30. And they're in the uh, dinner reception area. Um, and so... Henry Bush, Constantine's wife, says, We're sure going to miss you, Betsy. And Betsy says, Well, maybe sometime in the future, I'll return here with Jim. But I don't know about Christine. She really wants to stay back home with her friends. And Constantine's like asking Jim, you know, how have you been? And Jim says, to tell you the truth, that's going to be hard. With all my friends back home, avoiding me, Jim said. We all know Constantine. We all need to have some more of these dinners to make Jim feel welcome in D.C., Carol Stringer said. You know, Jim, I do some consulting work with the Department of Energy. I suppose I can drop off at uh, once in a while and talk to you, Jim Stringer said. Yeah, let's do golf uh, for, for lunch every once in a while. I think that would give me some that would do me some good, Jim said. And so, Constantine says, Jim, I want to warn you about keeping company with Blake Carter. I mean, he's a serious, uh, he's in serious meltdown with his wife, uh, divorce and all 
And Jim says, Look, Kino, I don't want to have very many, many, I don't have very many friends in this town. So I have to reach out for somebody that's got to be, that's got to be lonely. And he says, you got to build these contacts uh, from Texas Tech and SMU law up here. I don't have much. And Hillary Bush asked, well, JR, is this your junior or senior year? And she was like, uh, senior year. Now, I hear Tino Jr. is going to be graduating from uh, Regent this spring, JR said. Like father, like son. A lawyer. I thought maybe he would return to Texas after law school. But something tells me he wants to be some uh, lecturer at a Ascension Christian College. Let me live here in this big white castle. Okay, so it's 10.05 p.m. and JR is in the limo when he gets a call and it's Dexter. How are we doing? A long time. Listen, I'm sorry about these past three weeks. High reps have been on my case uh, for consulting uh, with bureaucrats. But this one is all mine. Meet me at the union tomorrow. And we'll all talk. But it's all the in, only the entrance from the union this time. So. We're now on the 31st. Um. Uh, Four AM Eastern, Jim wakes up, goes downstairs to the mansion home lounge. Oh my god, a, a copy of the Fort Worth um, Times and turns on C V and C. Alright, so it's nine AM at the mansion, at the American Conservative Union, Dexter is using, humming, uh, some, some, t a tune, uh, when the, in when the interns walk in. Okay, for the past month, we've been working on the economy. But this one, I swear, is social policy matter. Pacifica Christian Communications owns radio stations throughout the country. Now, some devoted Democrats, along with a few country club Republicans in the FCC want to bring back the fairness doctrine. Hendrick, this should be right up your alley. 
So you lead the team this time. Dexter said. Reagan ended this thing back in 87. Now guess what? The Democrats want it back in. We can't allow that to happen, sir. Jared said. Okay, then. Here's what I want you to do first. Thing. <clears throat> Today, I want you to hop on over to the Longworth House building and have a nice little chat with the House Energy and Commerce Committee uh, Chair Armstrong. Also, on Tuesday morning, or Tuesday night, I need you to pick up a friend of mine who is a staff aide with a committee. He can swing the committee uh, against the Fairness Doctrine. <coughs> there. Con Congressman Armstrong I need to time stamp. 11.20 a.m. Congressman Armstrong reassured me that he would vote against bringing back the Fairness Doctrine. That even though uh, con his constituency is liberal on some on some issues, the Fairness Doctrine was a bygone age. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. Uh, the four interns meet in Jair's office. Now, tomorrow morning early, We've got to drive up to the Ascension Hills. Dexter's friend lives in a little cabin up there. Uh, it's Falls Church. Yes. But he holds sway with the House Committee. Now, but he's poor as church mass, but he holds sway with the House Committee. Now, we drop off the limo, limo with the Chesapeake Harbor down in Hamburg. Three clicks away is this place we go up there, get him past the press. Because he won't talk to, to the press. Then Dexter says we source this boat at the harbor he's got for us. We get him in the boat. It's an inboard, outboard boat that Dexter has for us. Now, Caesar. You're the driver of the boat. And Daddy's going to fetch a limo for us to take us to and from. Dexter has given us orders that we deliver this friend to Paige over at Ascension Christian College. I know where the drop off is. And he and Paige are going to work together to sway the committee. Who made you the boss, Angel, Angel, uh, uh, Angel Stefani? A sophomore intern asked. 
Dexter saw a management course on my junior year platform. So, that's why he put me in charge. Okay, so it's 3 p.m. JR is working on a media release when his uh, father walks in. Did I interrupt? Uh, Jim asked. No, Daddy, I was just finishing this uh, press release, JR said. You know, I've been thinking. It's going to be awfully lonely here when your mama and grandma and family get the airport tomorrow. I'm still staying at the apartment so I can entertain guests. You don't have to do that, boy. You can entertain who the hell you want. Just don't let Horton be too demanding of the, of the help. Okay, so it's 5 p.m. The family sits down in the mansion front lounge for a long talk. And Betsy says, I realize it's going to be difficult for you to uh, when Nia Mama is uh, leaving for Midland, Betsy says. Uh, JR, Betsy's arranging for your flight to Dallas on the 12th. Ken can take you back to the ranch on Monday. So Jim says, Brody's being our butler and towel boy. Miriam and Raymond Raimondo are the cooks. And don't worry about me, Jim said. Avery's moving in tomorrow afternoon. And Dave will move in Friday. Cowboy Joe already lives here. And Grace will move in fully on Monday, Jim said. So now it's 7 p.m. For dinner that night, it was hamburger steak, a cheesy garlic mashed potatoes, asparagus, and for dessert, lemon swain, a lemon chilled cheesecake. Uh, with extra lemon juice on the top. Okay, so it's 9 p.m. Jeff, I'm sitting in the front lounge when my phone rings. It's Karen. Do you want to have dinner tomorrow night? Karen said. My place. I'll have the cook. Fix burgers. Daddy says he's having dinner with Andrew's house. Jared said. We'll have dinner tomorrow night at six. Uh, Jim walks into the lounge. He says, like the issues? Jared's like, no, no. Uh, just the very just the affection to my girl. All right, Jim said. Good night. Well, I was talking code. You know what I mean. I knew how Daddy felt about me being with Karen Kreider. <laughs> yeah. So now it's eleven p.m. Elizabeth, uh, she's falling asleep in the bedroom 
of our apartment in Washington, D.C. for the last time. Um, but before she goes to bed, she drinks some iced sweet chamomile tea and takes some 5 HTP drops. 1 a.m. Eastern. It's obvious the next morning, well, than that. A limousine arrives at 14 Heritage Gate, and the four interns go inside. And so here's Dexter on a headset. Okay, the driver's been advised to take you to a harbor in Hamburg, D.C. Hendrick. You and Marcos, get your papers ready. Once all, once at the harbor, Marcos opens the access gate, and both of you uh, climb on the boat. Mark Anthony is getting antsy. Hendrick. You're the captain of this operation. Hargrove and McGee stay in the limo. Once they get off the boat and clear the gate and jump in the car, drive off as quick as you can. This is the end of Mark's poverty. If he can help, if he can help us. So, long story short, Jr. and Caesar, you know, they tap in the access gate and off on the boat. They arrive at the Ascension Hills, and then they open the cabin. They knock on the cabin door. Uh, and they're shivering in fear was Dexter's friend. Oh, God, thank God. Thank God, Mark Anthony said. I thought Dexter Colgate was kidding me. It's always. We gotta duck out the back to avoid the press. So they climb back onto the boat, and it's okay. We fast forward to six a.m. as the limo pulls up in front of Longworth Hall. Uh, Anthony, pause for a moment. Wait a minute! How poor is church mice? Hoop hoop. It's church mice. Who paid for the limo? I know Dexter ain't that kind of money. And Jared said, I did. J.R. Hendrick. Hendrick Charters. Hendrick Foods. Jared said. And, and Paige is like, it's all right, Mark. You're safe. Wait a couple of days for it to clear the committee and pass the house floor. And then after that, it's on to the Senate uh, and, and, and Mark is like, I promise, Dexter, I promise. So now it's 7 a.m. And breakfast that morning was toast with apple butter with a choice of milk or orange juice. Dex uh, Colgate had you work 
five straight hours. I want you to take the day off so that you can see your mama and grandma to the airport. I'll talk to uh, Dexter. He'll see my way. So it's 9 a.m. Central. Uh, Kyle's pull, truck pulls up um, at the drive of Swainfield. So Christine runs out to meet Kyle and his family. And Christine's like, how long has it been this time? You came home just in time for my mom and grandma. They're flying home. They're coming home to the ranch for good. And, and Kyle's like, shut it, Heifer. It's good to see you, too. So he's unloading the truck. Mark, take the bulls and put, put them in with the rams. I want early ready for the rodeo circuit. Kerrville, Dallas. To Dallas, uh, to Kerrville, Dallas, San Marcos, and Nacogdoches. And definitely keep the sheepdog away from him. I mean that this time. Okay, Kyle. Dude, seriously. The bell. <laughs> we have to give you the bell, my friend. And Madison says, come inside, Christine. We got to let the staff know that, that, that uh, Betsy's coming home and Grandma Elizabeth is coming home for good. And so it's 9.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern in the mansion foyer of 14 Heritage Gate. Betsy, Jim, Grandma Elizabeth, and J.R. talk. That's the last of my things loaded into the car, Betsy said. And that's the last of Mama's things. I'm going to miss this place. And Grandma Elizabeth leans over and gives Jer a hug and a kiss. You finish your internship and fly back to school and keep your head held high like the gentleman CEO you are. Betsy, if something happens, to your mama. And you need to come back here. You come back here. No sense in your uh, weathering your grief all alone, Jim said. Only oh, time will tell, Betsy says. Now, we better get going. Who wants to get to the airport on time? Okay, so it's 10.15 a.m. And as Betsy and Grandma Elizabeth board the plane, um, Dale runs toward his mother. Go make me proud. And I'll see you soon, Betsy said. I really love you so much. You've become a gentleman. Jared. As the plane closed the door and the stairs rolled up and the plane taxes down the runway, tears filled my eyes. Because I knew other than the visit home in August, I 
weekend visit in, in September, a weekend visit in October, I knew that there would, these would be the last times I'd see my Grandma Elizabeth alive again. 1 p.m. Eastern, at Kevin's assistance, he and JR have lunch with uh, with Am Am Amber and Reba. Nice house uh, for a congressman, JR. Is this a proposal of marriage? Amber said. <sighs> Relax, Amber. You and JR are just friends right now, uh, Kevin McDonald said. Besides what goes when Bill Clinton is, is, is through with the old man, he's about to sell them. To sell it, Reba said. You're sweet, young lady. Absolutely not, Jim said. I don't think he'll run for Congress. But he gonna teach it law and public affairs at Central Christian College. This house is going to JR someday. So it's one PM and the private jet arrives and goes into uh, the Jeremy Swain uh, uh hangar. And there comes Kyle with Betsy's 1990 Chevy Suburban. And, and Betsy's, she, you know, running down the stairs, Kyle! Oh, Kyle, it's been too long! And Betsy, and Kyle says, Mama, get in the front passenger seat. I'm driving you home to the ranch. Mike, Lower the lift. We put Grandma in the back. Kyle said. So now it's 3 p.m. Imagine this big mansion. And JR is at the base of the stairs. This big red staircase. And JR is walking by the mansion foyer. When his father uh, calls down to him. Where you off to, boy? Jim asked. Uh, back to the library. We searched for an administrative letter. Boy, get up here and spend some time with your father, who feels alone, Jim said. So J.R. goes into the elevator into the dream team now the lounge to see his father. Uh, Dad, what's going on? Jim said. Boy. I was getting some cattle getting ready to go for Ram Rail for August in September. I just want you to know me and you are going to spend some time together in this house as long as we can. Okay, so it's 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, Andrew and Margaret House arrive at Forking Heritage Gates. And they have, they're having some cocktails. Explained in pleasantries with Jim and JR. Of course, we know JR don't drink. But, for the sake of temperance, JR, I think we're going to get some, uh, some root beer. I think I got an extra root beer.
How about for a fresh one, I guess? No, it's still some more. Freshen up our voices. Yes, indeed. All right. Eight PM. Bit bit dinner that night was Angus, uh uh steak, medium well, baked potatoes, fried asparagus, fried squash, and uh chocolate uh chocolate brownies. Yes, I like a little bit of everything, and some ginger ale. Tara said, and and Karen says, I would like everything, plus the master's house wine. Karen said, Karen, I didn't know you ever drank. Tara said, Tara said. Oh, don't tell me you don't ever return to drinking, Jr. Karen said. I'm trying to quit. Karen, my grandma is dying. I apologize, Jr. Karen said. I had no idea. Anyway, I remember when I was a very small girl. My mother used to always say that a glass, the good glass of wine, always goes well with dinner. Karen, your parents, your parents always had those high society dinners. Grandma hated them. Uh, those. Unless it was entertaining at the ranch. The only high society dinner he went with was with Mama in 1961 with John and Jackie Kennedy. And you expected me to be Jackie. See your debate trophy on the wall? 27 members. On that damn debate team, and I was the one that always took the gutsy moves, the gutsy positions. <clears throat> Hell, I took on Duke's University in Fort Worth and won. Karen cut him off. Not another word. Your father's machismo is not very attractive to me, Jr. Oh, Karen. The bell. First call. I'm now Karen. says and what I've been trying to tell you all along and what have I trying, been trying to tell you all along I am my own man more my mama's uh, son she raised me with her values and Karen's like oh, I'm sorry J.R. Never should have said anything. You were the lucky one. 
my mother raised me with her twisted, uh, uh, she foisted her twisted that beliefs on me. My daddy was a sick womanizer. So when I was 11, my granddad took over in helping mama raise me. Okay, so it's 9 p.m. Give us to some ritzy dinner with, with Andrew House, and there's JR and, and Karen in the mansion front lounge, and they're talking. JR, I'm sorry about what you said. Grandma says I shouldn't let mom get to me. I guess she's having problems with hubby number seven, Karen said. Doesn't matter. Been doing all this soul searching. All this crap with Charlie Nation. Jennifer, it don't matter. But we can be something again. Gerald's hip. And Karen's like, well, let it be. I can see why my mother can't stand your father. But this hatred is out of hand. Wrong side of the tracks. Honey, I can't help that daddy was a ruthless uh, calculating Wildcatter back in the 60s. And the Vietnam War changed. Daddy. Got his wires screwed up. So, man. But that ain't my focus. It's how to win a debate and see that smile on your face our moment and Karen's like our moments I understand we shouldn't let your father and my mother determine our fates and Gerald's like daddy already knows he can't I politely told him to, to go to hell. <laughs> Ooh, boy. So, now we know where we stand here. August 2nd and 3rd. Okay, so it's 8 a.m. Uh, the four interns walk into the planning room where Dexter is listening to Dale Watson's Way Down Texas Way. Jarrah, that's an old country song that my grandparents used to listen to. And so here's what Dexter said. Okay, folks. We have a few more days. And then this fairness doctrine, BS, will be blocked in Congress. Now, first off, today, we need to get some particulars uh, for a blurb in order to sway Congressman Bill Hume. He's nuttier than a fruitcake. Hendrick, you are in luck. Your father has been in touch with similar uh, crack researcher staff with the Blake Carter show. Now, they have enough information uh, 
and simple blurbs and fact sheets to impress uh, the, this congressman. But you guys have to go get it. Now Paige informs me that there is a Lexus stretch limo uh, parked in an alleyway on, on Pennsylvania. You guys need to go in to the staffer who is going to be there with Blake Carter. Hendrick, you get to ride with the staffer and Blake Carter back to Union and talk to Paige. The rest of you interns, you accompany him there. Tomorrow in the morning, around 11, it gets dicey. The committee doesn't want any uh, too much press, so they're meeting in the Federal Building in Baltimore. I need everyone on point. Get what information you have. See what the temperature is down in the committee meeting. And then return back to Union to report to Page. Now, thanks to Mark Anthony, on Friday, we can't get a chance to do some uh, sway here regarding uh, talking to a couple of the senators about swinging the votes in the committee and blocking uh, this hush-rush law. Should be easy to take care of. <coughs> Alright, now I'm back. <sighs> yeah, I it's one of the interns had a red Hummer that we used to drive into from Fairfax, Virginia to Washington, D.C. to get the material a 30 pound Blake Carter greeted me as I stepped into the stretch limo. Bump on in here and sit down. I have at least two blurbs. Uh, one's for the union. And one's for that lovely congressman. You. Trying to get this. Geek. To understand. The fairness doctrine. Killed free market and free speech. 9 a.m. Uh, with the other three interns sent back to uh, their cubicles, the limo stops, the car limo stops at the entrance of the union. And, of course, Paige gets the material. 1 p.m., and this is where some fireworks is going on. Jimmy's have a budget meeting of the SBA. Feel later was uh, recommending a tax hike to bolster the budget for small business. Phil, are you crazy? Jim said. 
we already are facing a budget fight in the house, Jim said. Don't say another word, Phil said. You have all this money from drilling oil from the ground. And you lecture me about how the government spends money. Wake the hell up, Phil, Bill Mayer said. I don't necessarily like everything Jim recommends. But wait a minute. He has a point. Gingrich is not going to go for a damned tax hike. I can't even believe we're ha having this conversation, Philip later said. You're totally lost, Jim said. When you know that from geologists that you're going to hear at the dry hole, stop digging, Jim said. You and your damn oil analogies, Philip later said. Hey, Philly, the bell. Sorry about that. We had a phone call come in. Put this thing on Do Not Disturb. Where we were is Phil's getting school. We're schooling Phil here. And this is uh, Bill Mayer. He says, Good grief, Phil. Jim's analogies have been asinine before. But this time he's right. For heaven's sake, let's stop arguing, Jim said. Excuse me, but the press is going to wonder why you're going to ask for a, Excuse me, but the press is going to wonder why you're asking for a tax hike. Carol said. We got budget hawks in Congress. And Clinton would be stupid to go for this. At the same time, at the same time, J.R. and Ember are having lunch at, at, a, at a burger shot. And then we said, you should know I found out a few things. Your boss, Dexter, well, he's only going to be working until the first week in September. And then he's taking a leave of absence to teach public policy at Ascension Christian College. And we said, Well, I love that college. I think it's more, far more of a sort than you see. I think Dexter is in love with someone who is going to be the union's next client. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. Um... Jim has given his dream team uh, some uh, basic training um, in preparation for the fall's budget battle. JR is in the room just off the, dream, the, the movie theater with his laptop working on the press blurb. Okay, 4 p.m. JR has just entered. The mansion for you. When he can hear his father bellow from the stairs. 
boy, come on up here and be with your stressed out father, Jim said. So they go upstairs, and, and Gerald's like, what happened? And Jim, ooh, he slams down this glass of, of bourbon, and he just, he goes through this big, long uh, rant. I'm talking at least worth three paragraphs, and he breaks he slams his cocktail glass into the wall. He's railing against Clinton, and he's just, man, B bad day for Jim. My daddy did lose it. Of course, he wasn't. He wasn't very far behind. Four twenty-five p.m. As father says, father's upstairs. Uh. Cavorting with a model. Jarrah's downstairs in the mansion. Front lounge. Uh, reading the Bible. It was a bad day. Dexter had called me. To, to say that Bill Hume showed his butt there on the house floor and got disciplined by Newt Gingrich. Even more exasperating was that we had to go and attend the committee meeting the next day in Baltimore. Okay, so it's 4.40 p.m. and in the press briefing room, J.R., Ooh, he's mad. I was out of my head. And so he's, he's losing his life. How dare you pull a stunt like that? You called for a board meeting. And without any sense of formalities, or protocol, or decency, or decorum, you ask for raise in the budget for marketing without even bothering to consult me. So Kevin and Brad approach the door, and uh, Dave Rosenberg says, "I wouldn't go in there if I were you." And Brad's like, why? And and then, uh, and Mike Field says, well, because JR's in there. And boy, is he pissed. And JR's, he's ranting, he's like, And he's like, I don't, I don't give a damn how things are done in Miami, or New York, or Los Angeles, Las Vegas. It was, uh, this is Texas. Uh, you've been disloyal. You're fired. I don't even think about getting a severance package. So Brad, he, he, you know, like an idiot, Brad. He's like, you okay, kid? And JR is like, bad day in hell. He's breaking the only glass in the press briefing room. I just, please leave me alone. I'm distressed right now. Brad. That was really stupid. And for that, you earned the bell. You earned the bell, you stupid idiot. Okay, so it's 6 p.m. Cocktail was taking place in the front lounge. 
14 Heritage Gate. Um, the Temptations, My Girl is being played. Uh, all the men are singing uh, in unison. Except, of course, with Blake Carter. But even JR is drinking a beer at this one, you know? Because, you know, his father asked. So, it's 6.30 p.m. And... Dinner that night with Tony Asada. Uh... Rice Arona. And Wacky Cake. And that was the recipe given, uh... To the new bride of Jim's father, you know, of course, his mother, uh, Marie, by Jim's grandmother, uh, Emily Catherine Hendrick. And they're having dinner with Barbara Hall, I'm a failed to mention that. And she says, Miller and I have been working it out. Uh, we go to pastoral counseling next week. Uh, Barbara Hollum said. And Blake's like, wish I could say the same thing about me and Katie, but when she went on the air this afternoon without consulting me, it's obvious. We're over. Play cards. Just. And Jim's like, cheer up, Blake. It won't stay that way. You'll find love again. And, and of course, Jairus is I've never had the pleasure of getting married. Well, I'm in the middle of, in the middle of working things out for my senior year, and then it's off for law school. And so, so Millard says it took weeks for me and Barbara work it out. I thought we were over for sure, but sure enough, she decides that we get back together. And Barbara says, so JR, if you go to law school, what area of law? Uh, are you, are, would you practice? And Jim's like, that's a no-brainer, honey. Business law, oil and gas law, Jim said. So Blake's like, oh, Jim, don't be different presumptuous. He's still in his uh, senior year. So it's 1 a.m., uh, Central, Grandma Elizabeth, she, she woke up crying for JR. That's, that's a real thing, the hard experience. Uh, 3 a.m., Central, Carl wakes up to milk the cows today. Uh, they were rounding the cattle to the South 24. Okay, so. 6 a.m. Jr. is in the Mansion Home Chapel, and he's reading the uh, J Jerusalem Maxims, which is an extra canonical book of the Assemblies of Christ that has their beliefs and, and certain revelations they have. And then at 7 a.m., breakfast with cinnamon rolls, French toast, and an option of milk and orange juice. And Kevin says, the scouts 
are having a citizenship day today. So this should be fun, Kevin McDonald says. I think I have found out what my senior advocacy contention is going to be about. Renewal from the societal decay of America, Jim said. Come again, Jim says. You don't know the slightest of where to begin. The Smith Center has an advisory committee. I will be meeting with, uh, that I will be meeting with Daddy. It should be all right, Gerald said. Please, when you get back to Texas, be good to your mama, Jim says. Grandma dying? Mama's gonna need my moral support, Gerald said. Watch it with Karen Crowder, Jim said. She'll break your heart again, son. Her her mom is a feminist who can't seem to, to, to keep a man. And I swear, if Mindy Crowder hurts you in any way, I'll... Of course, J.R. cuts him off. Daddy, I know who she is. An F. Or check out. Okay, Jim, the bell. Okay, so it's 8 a.m. Jim is meeting with his dream team, um, along with his press at the uh, press attendant, uh, John Sistina. And it's spelled C I S T I M A. After meeting with one of my colleagues, I have decided that these rallies are crucial. We need the people to know that what the government is doing for the small business. Mamas and Papas, it's not good, Jim said. I'm looking for remember to stay by his side. I want to be uh, someone to be at these rallies to help you. To field the questions that might come uh, from the president, from the pr- president's rallies. If it's any personal questions about his family, Wife, will kick their ass to the curb, John Sistina said. 9 a.m., Jim holds a press conference. 11 a.m., J.R. rents a limo to take the interns from his house to the Baltimore Federal Building. All right, here's what's up. There's a showdown between Congressman Hume and Virginia Congressman Robert Alexander. Both of them from Virginia. J.R. Pages parked the car behind the federal building. 
walk in there long enough to, to edge ASAP. Hendrick, you can take the limo home, but go in there and get a fact sheet from Bill Hume and get back to uh, Hendrick, you're to send a communique about what goes on in that committee meeting. Okay, so 11.45 a.m. The interns walk into the building where the committee is taking place. I have to be forceful, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Alexander. We have moved way beyond the timeline that we should have for considering the Figurance Doctrine. So therefore, I call but leave the vote this out of committee on the House floor or kill it now. The committee is strangely enough voted to put the the appearance doctrine before the house floor. <coughs> Twelve thirty PM. Jerry and Karen have cheeseburger lunch at JBK Circle. And Jerry says better this is better than all those union picnics that we've had scattered throughout the internship. Jarrah said, Your ego can easily be bruised, Jarrah, but not as bad as your father's, Karen teased. But yet here we are, the two of us, together, had a lunch. You know, Working for Heritage has been fun. It is helping me focus on what I want to study for my BS, for my MSW, having advocacy uh, contention to write next spring. And I've got to say, the internship I had with the American Conservative Union has really narrowed my focus. My daddy sure as hell couldn't do that. Uh, Karen laughed. You can't stand him. Conflict and feeling. Ever since I got that that trust fund money. Okay, so it's one thirty p.m. As JR is working in his office, Jim is meeting uh, in the Dream Team Lounge with uh, John Sestina and Carol Stringer reading a PR packages for, the, for some of the rallies. At 1 p.m. Central, at the ranch, Betsy is riding her horse, Cowgirl. Helping the ranch hands round up the cattle for grazing. Tomorrow she would be uh, helping one of the hands uh, load up some deer for a special auction in Houston. Her mother is not doing so well. Elizabeth sleeps most of the time. What time she's not watching her sobs and crocheting. Best to be acute, acutely aware of her mother's situation. 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Here I was in the house press gallery 
as Newt Gingrich makes the first speech opening the floor for the debate. This provision is lousy and untenable. I am surprised at this even surviving committee. The news media will be exempt from this provision. If we reenact this, I fear it would be a shame to suppress free speech at a moment when America is at a crossroads. The Democrats have been trying this for nearly four months now. And to be honest with you, well, the majority, I think, we have in Congress, it will not pass this House, let alone the Senate. And Bill Clinton would be a full assignment. Okay, so it's 3.30 p.m. Eastern. So his father is in his office, swagging away. Jared is in the mansion front lounge, watching C-SPAN, watching the debate taking place on the House floor. Uh, 3 p.m. Central. Elizabeth? Okay. Come on, Elizabeth. Um, is sleeping in the den. As Ricky Lake is on TV. Thomas and Rachel moved into one of the, the Hendrick condos on East Ridge in Odessa. Thomas was back to being a Coast Guard recruiter. Meanwhile, Kyle is out there uh, helping the hands milk the cows for the afternoon. Madison has spent the day helping the help clean the dishes, clean the kitchen, and of course, of course, watching over the two the, the two kiddos. Kara, many years uh, later, after Kyle and Madison divorced in 1998, George grew up to be, that's uh, Kyle's stepson, he grew up to be the head singer in a death metal band. His family would become rioters uh, for social justice, something which would turn Mama's stomach. <clears throat> so it's 6 p.m. Eastern. Brad picks up Jr. for the Bible study. Is to be the last one there. Uh, Five thirty p.m. Central. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Christine is riding her horse, uh, Citrine. Even though she enjoyed the time in Washington D.C. With friends, she deeply resented her father taking them away from the ranch. Okay, so at 7 p.m. Eastern, the, the Bible study begins uh, with Dr. Charles Stanley um, having a sermon about the strong, a strong church. So at 7.30 p.m. Um, Eastern, meanwhile... The dream team is having uh, photo ops together on the stairs. John Cena is there. He had all of these photo ops in preparations for the rally. 8 p.m. Feeling lonely, Jim asks Claire Les. Spend the night with him. Woo! Oh! Thank you, thank you. 
So, here we are, guys. We... August 4th, 1 a.m. Unbeknownst to me, Dexter was sitting there in the House press gallery as debate and speeches were happening in the House chamber. Like you wouldn't believe. All over the fairness doctrine thing. I mean, after all, Pacifica Christian Communications was paying us a pretty penny to make sure that this gets blocked in Congress. 2 a.m. Eastern with only 12 congressmen there. Jaconi adjourns the House and uh, they decide to open up it again at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, having down 12 cups of coffee, Dex, Dexter, he down, down the stairs to Capitol Hill, and he dodges the press to go back to Fairfax. 2.30 a.m., Jim wakes up with Claire uh, Less at his side. Um... He rushes downstairs to the Mansion Front Lounge to read the Daily Devotional. Okay, 4 a.m., Jim goes to the basement gym to, to do some exercise. 8 a.m. It didn't take much time for House Speaker Newt Gingrich to go ahead and close the, the discussion of the fairness doctrine and then open it for a vote. 313 congressmen voted it down. That's 72%. With 85 Democrats joining. Nine thirty AM Eastern. Back at the mansion, Jim is finalizing the details of getting uh, the stretch limo. Take him and the dream team to the Pond Hotel. Uh twelve oh five. Jailer had had a swim at eleven thirty. And then he, um, he, he gets some pizza delivered to the, his grandma's old apartment. 1 p.m., Jim and his dream team are meeting at the DuPont the Hotel with Carl, Carl Rowe. And Rowe says, okay, Mr. Rosenberg, you go first. Now, here it is. Jim goes to this uh, budget meeting two days ago and Phil later asks for a tax hike knowing that it will never pass Congress especially with the budget battle coming up this fall. Jim Hendrick wants to hold rallies to deflect on this BS and subterfuge and letting the American people really know what's going on. Clinton is a liability. And Dick Morris is a fool for consulting him, Dave Rosenberg said. Is that your assessment? Rob said. Yes, sir. Folks, we must be careful. She Clinton likes to talk a big deal. But can he walk the walk? Jim's rallies can draw attention to the budget battle going on. 
but we're not sure that the outcome of this fall won't hurt or help President Clinton. Excuse me, Mr. Rove, Jim said. These rallies are there to take a look for the people. Just to take a look. They still have to decide for themselves. You pointed it out best in your book on why you why you uh, endorse Clinton, Mr. Hendrick. Bush lost the last election because he could not deliver on t keeping taxes low regarding the economy. Plus, some say that he didn't finish the job with Desert Storms. Remember me this. You're not expecting Jim Hendrick to be silent, Grace Arthur said. You guys are to be silent observers, Ralph said. If, Dob, if Bob Dole is nominated, he is a weak candidate. Now, I'm not saying that, Jim, you should run. But your dream team should make it look like that way so that Clinton is scared. And he starts drawing more of the public just in case Dole becomes the nominee. Rope said. I got to say, I got to love this. Avery Covington said. Put the screws for Clinton and close the can. Laughter broke out in the boardroom. 2 p.m. With the dream team downstairs in the theater, Jim is meeting with uh, Betsy's social secretary, Bethany Horowitz, to set up tomorrow night's steak dinner. <coughs> At the primary of the steakhouse. 3 p.m. Jim walks into the secretarial suite of the mansion and announces to his secretaries and one of his consultants, Kelly's, that he's going to take the rest of the day off. 2.30 p.m. <coughs> Dexter sends Jerry an email apologizing apologizing for them having to work Late, but eight thirty, the interns had to go to the Russell office building. So it's four p.m. Jared just starting to listen to some of the Blake Carter show when Blake cascades castigates Dan Quill when he gets a phone call. Uh, from a public racial specialist from Nicodemus Hood. What? Jared said. You talk to Norma Sanders without even consulting me? Oh, my dear. You're going to have to pay for that. 32% pay cut. There was a long pause. It is that precisely that I pay you to, to create, not gossip. Oh, my daddy is going to hit the ceiling when he hears about this. 6 p.m. Jim has received word 
from Mike Shields about the phone call between Jarrah and the public affairs specialist. So he calls in uh, an early dinner, shake and make pork chops. I couldn't believe it. Some woman putting out some gossip rag without even consulting my own son, the CEO of Nicodemus Foods. It's not your fault, boy. You handled it nice and well. Now here's what I'm gonna to, going to do. I'm going to pull some money out of that marketing. And I'm going to fire two people on the chopping block for gossiping against my boy, Jim said. I don't care who you are. No woman ever ever trash talks my firstborns. You got that? Jim said. Yes, sir. Jerry said. Now, after dinner, I'm going to be out on business. Don't throw any wild parties, Jim teased. 8.30, of course, four turns. Get into a van, go to the uh, Russell Sim office building, of course. Committee brings it to the bank Senate floor. So now we're at the last leg, thank goodness. Okay, 1 a.m. Central. So Grandma Elizabeth wakes up after being asleep for 10 hours. Um, she's having some mild nausea, so she reaches for her tonic and medication. 3 a.m., Kyle gets up, uh, he goes into the living room for some coffee, and one of the hired help. He's about to go milk some cows. 5 a.m., of course, Betsy is out talking to cow and one of the ranch hands. They're loading up some elk for an auction in El Paso. Kyle's not going to be back until whatever. So, Jerry R. is having breakfast with his father at 7. At 9, of course, Jerry's father is having a rally at Embassy Suites Hotel. Uh, 9.30, J.R. is called to the unions, so the foreign terms get back into their conservative unions. Okay, so here's what's going on. The Senate floor is going to be opening up the vote at 11. Now, each of you are on your own and getting there. Jill, I need you and Delano in the press gallery. The other two, you're going to be on a Senate, on the Senate floor observing the boat. As we speak, once we get on the final Book tabulations. You call me. Let me know what's going on. And we regroup back at the Union. So it's 11 a.m. Jarrah goes into the press gallery with Delano. Other interns are there. I went to Jarrah. I went to one ballot initiative by the two senators from Texas to put an end to a debate over the Fairness Doctrine. 
uh, being reinstated. Only 40 senators voted for it. 60 senators with 7 Democrats joining voted against the, the measure. It was killed. 11.30 a.m. Eastern. As the in four interns take the drive back to the Union gymnasts at the pool area being massaged by the masseuse. Some of the good dream team is having masseuse on staff massaging them as well. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. Eastern. The four interns make it into the American Conservative Union and into the fourth floor office of Dexter. Thank you so much. You say Pacifica, a lawsuit that could have easily gone all the way up to the Supreme Court. All of you, each and every one of you, did your part. And I am so proud of you. So sad to see that this internship is over. I mean, beyond the work. We have fun. We had union picnics. Some of us went out gazing at the stars. And now it's all over. But I'll only begin the fall uh, internship for one week. Okay, so it's 12 p.m. Central, and uh, Betsy is uh, overseeing the cook, making some Grandma Elizabeth's good fried chicken. 1 p.m., Betsy had been gathering uh, eggs from the hens off and on all morning. Now she's in the ranch house, and of course upstairs on the phone is Christine and Jennifer talking about Never Forget by this group called take that. So it's 3 p.m. Central. Uh, Betsy is overseeing uh, uh, the cleaning of the swing field in the pool with Jair's return uh, to Texas. In, 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 a, uh, in a week. Christine and Jennifer are upstairs talking about boys in classes. And, and Christine's like, you know, I can't believe that Mrs. Schum Schumacher is going to be teaching us Christian citizenship this year, Christine said. Mrs. Schumacher from the, the eighth grade? Jennifer laughed. I bet the nuns and Father Cromwell got tired of her, so that's why she's uh, left from Alamo Prep, Christine said. Anyway, okay, so Jennifer says, anyway, Mike Duggan says she took a year's leave of absence to find herself. Her husband was cheating on her. And our kids are gossiping. So it's 3.10 p.m. Grandma Elizabeth is delighted when the phone rings. It's JR. The internship. It's over, Grandma. Now if I can just get home, JR said. JR, I have been... Waiting so long to hear from you, Elizabeth said. Grandma, I can't wait to get back to Texas and back on Swainfield to see you. You have great nets, grandson, and I love you so much. Stay strong for your mama. Okay, so it's 5 p.m., and Kyle... 
he arrives back at the ranch. And of course, you know, Al Rudd's is Betsy. See, when he's hollering his two boys, George, Andrew, get your butts over here now. Right now. So, you know, Betsy and Madison go out to, to talk to him. Dinner was left over fried chicken. Uh, Grandma Lisa's is pleased, but Kyle's not. Leftovers? Mama, really? Kyle said. I was just getting used to being without them. Kyle said. And Elizabeth, she's like, Shut up, you're stressing me out, young young man. Your your grandma and I mean, your granddad and I grew up sometimes not knowing when we was gonna get a chance to eat. So shut up and have them leftovers. Okay. Whoo Interesting. Seven PM Uh So they're having their dinner at this steakhouse, and Grace Arthur is saying, hats off to Jim Hendrick, uh, and so, Jim says, now first I'm going to give a toast to my son. He finished his summer internship today, and is now off for a senior year. Back in Texas. A man after my own heart, J.R. said. And Dave Rosenberg says to J.R. I still think that you did write quite well at the rally. Hammering in the point for better uh, needed access to education for small business. Owners, Dave Rosenberg said. People will send the message. People send the message to start listening to, to me, Jim said. But I also have hope they'll listen to JR. Okay, I'm going to give this episode. Three point six fact sheet and the root beer. Hope you enjoy listening to the Dare and Texan Gentlemen. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, become a part of the adventure. This is James Hendrick of Pirates Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. It's going to get more interesting from here.